Test, test, one, two, three, test, test, one, two, three. We'll see if we go on live here shortly. Looks like we're live. All right, welcome back to City Battle Fishing Field Team, COAF Field Team on YouTube, your host, Glenn. And well, this round we'll just do an impromptu live stream to maybe explain what yours truly did this evening. Um, short on time, unable to uh, get away from the day job until the uh, five o'clock hour. But that said, enough time to at least have the opportunity to check out the pond in this case bethany lakes where they stocked earlier this week um has been tough trying to find a pattern uh, and so maybe i'll explain via some video on what yours truly did so let me go and shift over to the next scene here and pop the video Okay, so you can see there's a lot of cars here, and there's some definite people there fishing. Maybe to see a few out there, but here, let me pause it. Look right there. Right there. That's what we were looking for. That's that evening midge hatch that happens, and uh, it seems to happen every year. You can see that the fish are feeding on something. They're not actually jumping out of the water. I mean, occasionally they are, but most times they're just feeding just under the surface. So that's what we're looking at. Okay, I decided to go to the other side of the horseshoe-shaped pond and try fish in the bank area here because I did still see a lot of activity and um, it was less crowded here. So, hey, let's go and give that a shot. So, let's see what happens. In this case, I'm using a silver super duper initially. And we did get some hits the other day with the silver super duper. Let me pause it here. So that's where I was earlier, and we could see definitely some movement. In fact, there's one over here just kind of popping up over the surface. So, may hey, they're there. Just got to figure out what they're doing. So, bummer, bummer that yours truly was still having an issue trying to get them to bite. But, so, we're working the pattern. Initially, a silver super duper, and we'll see how that goes. Let's just do another cast again. Okay, so the Silver Super is not working. We'll go shift over to the Fire Tail. This one has a brass blade. Fishing it slowly. Stop and go retrieve. Steady retrieve. And then finally back or to the Bubble Fly Rig. This is using a Griffith Snap. Fished wet. Or actually fished dry. And what has us prompted is... We do see some fish striking at the uh, fly. It's just, it's a very small fly. I think it's a size 16 or size 18. So it's a little bit small for them to hook. So you got to set the hook right. And well, my mojo's off. Let me go pause it real quick. Okay, just briefly, you saw right back here, little circle rivulets or whatever where the fish are again feeding so they're they're feeding on something just under the surface and we're hoping that midge or in this case at griffith's net size 16 size 18 is going to be the uh, one to get them and we're we're thinking it will because we've already had uh one take and then several kind of kind of chasing it so oh hi axel and this is uh just trying to go over what I did to find the pattern today. In fact, it was the uh, bubble fly rig that worked. Um, how'd the fishing go? Um, I had one on the line, ended up uh, having a couple, <coughs> excuse me, a couple more uh, strike, um, but it was all on that bubble fly rig. So I'm mean, just explaining here what I'm doing. All right. There, he came off. That's that's what it was. They were we could see them hit it, and uh, definitely uh, went for it. Would a zebra midge be good? Um, let me pause it real quick. Uh, zebra midge uh, should work. Um, what I tend to do because I definitely see the the uh, hatch happening, and I've caught some of these in my hand in the past. Is it's that sort of like a black dry fly midge pattern or in this case, that Griffith's gnat, 
Uh, I'm fishing it dry in this case. Um, when I'm retrieving it, I'm kind of slightly moving it over slowly and getting some hits. Um, but you, you'll see here in a moment how I'm kind of moving the, uh, the fly really slow and then they're, they're striking. Should I use a three weight, seven, six or five weight, nine fly rod? Um, it's a small pond, but I, I tend to like using the uh, nine foot fly rod just because it has a little bit more control for me. Um, and then because of where you'll probably be fishing or fly fishing in that open area on the other side, um, that might be a, a good opportunity there. But I, I've used shorter rods in the past. Um, but for fishing this pond, I, I tend to like that nine foot fly rod. All righty. And in my back pocket, definitely have, um, all the volley buggers, the near deer. Um, and then because I see this hatch happen, it's happened almost, well, just about every year they've, they've, uh, stocked is in the evening as well as, uh, about midday. And even in the morning, look for those little circle rivulets or circle things where the the, the trout are kind of striking at something just under the surface is the bait fishing good i uh, heard from others that power bait was working well as well as um mouse tails um may try going out there tomorrow with the go fish camera and put some bait on there and see if they'll strike uh, i did see a couple yesterday um, who looked like they were limiting out fishing just, just before dark, as well as right at dark with some lighted floats. And it looked like they were fishing some kind of bait, uh, a good four to six feet down from the, from the float on the deeper side. So, um, it's a good opportunity. I think it, um, may not be as cold, um, as it was first thought of, but, uh, the bite should be good, um, Main thing I'm looking for when I go out there is, is I'm looking for that fish activity. You'll see them kind of circling um, the pond. You'll see them hitting on the surface. And initially, uh, you'll you'll actually see them start striking away at uh, different lures and whatnot. Let's see. We plan on going tomorrow. Do you know what time you'll be going? Um, I'll probably go pretty much first thing in the morning um, if everything goes right. Um, want to see if the uh, morning bite's good as well as um, if there's anything hatching out there. Uh, and I initially was going to bring the uh, fly rod. I may play by ear. Anyhow, uh, it looks like, at least in this case, the pattern uh, this evening was this bubble fly rig using these midges, in this case, a Griffith Snat size 16, size 18. And here's what I wanted to show is you can see out here, See the fish kind of feeding on something on the surface? And then I think I'm going to get a bite here shortly. Okay, so I'm just kind of moving the bubble fly through the water. And as I'm doing that, I'm noticing there's some, like, a wake right behind it where the, the fish are looking at it and turning away. And you only have a short opportunity uh, for this hatch in the evening. So it's more, it's getting darker but it's going to be hard to see what I'm doing. Um, but if you see how the rod is being held, um, you'll get an idea of how I'm presenting the fly in this case. It's not just sitting there. Uh, it's actually a little movement, uh, a slight movement. So think of that if you're, if you're with a fly rod, let it sit and then do a little slight movement or drag of your fly rod. So here I am kind of moving the rods off. There, he hit it. All right. And then he came off again. <laughs> so that's what it was like. And then uh, I had the opportunity, probably about maybe three, four other fish on the line uh, throwing the hook on me. Just uh, ended up missing the bite because uh, I got tangled and had to redo my rig. Right, and so this one, I'll, I'll be able to get them in hand. And then I'm going to drop them. <laughs> All right, I'm going to lose them here right there. <laughs> it goes in the water. So I had the bubble fly rig. And I initially had about four feet, five feet behind or uh, trailing with that Griffith snat. 
and then I adjusted it to about a two, three foot. Um, and then that seemed to get uh, a better amount of hookups and whatnot. So, and, and like I was saying, you just got a, a short opportunity um, in the evening for this bite. You'll see them hatching, I'd say 4.30, 5 o'clock, and then um, do what you can, as long as you can, uh, with that midge. Uh, and then hopefully that'll work out for you. Let's see, uh, we're going to go at 9 or 10 a.m. Alrighty, um, I may still be out there. I'm just going to play it by ear. I don't know how cold it's going to be, but um, I'm hoping that they'll be hitting again on these uh, Grivis net. And I'll probably do the same thing. I'll start out with a super duper. I'll shift over to the rooster tail and then I'll go back to one of these bubble fly rigs. And then um, if I need to, then I'll go to bait. Um, other than that, all for now, if there's um, anyone have any other questions, comments, I'm hoping this uh, uh, at least gives an idea as how I like to kind of find the pattern specifically in this case, Bethany Lakes. Do one uh, one other note is there's another pond uh, later, I think in February, March of next year, uh, Frisco Commons, a similar bite happens, right? Right at uh, about 4.30, 5 o'clock, some hatch is going to happen. And what's different about Bethany versus Frisco, that hatch, the whatever's hatching is a, is a lighter colored um, fly or bug. Um, whereas Bethany, a dark colored black or that Griffith snat, it works well. Uh, Frisco, you tend to have those sulfur or light brown, um, olive kind of, uh, midges, dry flies, and uh, tend to work really well there. So, uh, keep that in your back pocket next time you're up over there in the Frisco area, just up the road if you're in Collin County. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. All for now. Till next time, we'll catch you later and good luck and good fishing.